So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another mechanical video. In this video, I'm working on a 2011 Lincoln Grand Marquis with a 4.6 liter V8 Ford engine. And even if you're not working on a Lincoln Grand Marquis, this engine was available in a wide variety of Lincoln and Ford vehicles between the years of 1990 and 2014. It was used in everything from an F-Series pickup to Ford Mustang, and obviously in this Grand Marquis. So not only am I gonna go over how to replace this thermostat, and it's a very easy DIY to do, but why I'm going through that, I'm gonna explain some things that you might wanna check before replacing your thermostat, because a lot of the time the thermostat is replaced when it doesn't really need to be. So here is a chapter index of what takes place in this video and at what time it happens. So if you're looking for something specific, you can bypass through the stuff you don't need to see. So I don't waste your time. And let's get to it. So the reason I am actually replacing the thermostat is because I had the check engine light come on. I've got my little code reader here. I plugged it in and pulled codes and I had a P0128, which is coolant thermostat below regulating temperature. Now the funny thing about this is, this thermostat and seal had been replaced within a couple weeks prior. And the reason for that was, is this vehicle had a leak at the thermostat housing, so it was replaced. There was nothing wrong with the way the thermostat was replaced last time. It was just a faulty new thermostat. Now it doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Now, if you do end up receiving this code of the P0128 and it's not getting up to regulating temperature, most likely cause is gonna be a stuck open thermostat or a thermostat that's flowing too much when it is cold. The only other thing that I could think that would cause this code in particular would be a stuck engine coolant temperature switch or sensor or a stuck fan relay. That's basically telling the fan to stay on all the time. Now obviously a more often cause of changing a thermostat would be because you're overheating and the thermostat could definitely be the problem with that. However, some other causes of an engine that's overheating are getting a little warmer than usual besides obviously coolant level from possible either hoses leaking, getting old, cracked, or possible water pump leaking out the weep hole is a clogged radiator that's just packed with dirt. Now this happens more on vehicles that are used on job sites and a lot of dust, but it can happen to any vehicle. For that matter, you can have a plastic bag that flies up going down the freeway and gets in between your grill and then blocks the airflow getting through the radiator. So before jumping to a thermostat, it's always a good idea to make sure your radiator fins are not blocked with any obstructions like a plastic bag. It's also a good idea to either take a garden hose or a blow gun and blow through your radiator fins and make sure you don't have a bunch of dirt, debris, or tree chippings blowing out your radiator because that restricts the amount of air that can get pulled through the radiator by the engine fan and therefore is not cooling the radiator down efficiently. The other possibility is a engine fan that's getting weak or an engine fan relay that's not causing the fan to come on, therefore it cannot cool down the radiator. Now obviously there is some other possibilities that could cause that P0128 code or a possible engine overheat, but these are some common things that could happen that you might wanna check before assuming it is the thermostat. So right here I'm just removing the cover over the top of the engine and that takes a quarter inch ratchet. Then I felt the hoses to make sure it was cool enough where I wasn't gonna burn myself by taking this apart. After verifying that, I removed the radiator cap slowly to make sure there was not pressure built up in the system. Now this had these stupid spring-loaded hose clamps and I don't really like these things. They can be easy, but they can also be a pain in the ass, especially when the tab breaks off like this one did. Under normal circumstances, all you need is a pair of pliers to squeeze the tabs together and that will stretch out that clamp and allow you to remove the hose. Now, if you really want to, you could drain your radiator, but it's really not necessary for this thermostat. I just pulled the clamp off, then pulled the radiator hose back so it puts a kink in it to hold the water back from the radiator. And then the thermostat is right at the top of the engine, so nothing's really gonna drain out of there. If you're not gonna drain the radiator, please make sure you have a cold engine so you do not burn yourself by the coolant. Using a 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet, I removed the two thermostat housing bolts and removed the thermostat housing. Here is a view of the part numbers for the seal and the thermostat, if you want those. I got these ones from Advanced Auto Parts. The thermostat that was just replaced that was faulty came from Penny Pinchers, if that tells you anything. One thing to be super careful of is the orientation of the thermostat. 
The thermostat has to be put in and in the right direction, otherwise it will immediately overheat. And I am speaking from experience. I did that about 20 years ago when I was just getting started in this industry. Now, a lot of the times you won't be able to install this incorrectly because you won't be able to put the thermostat housing back on. Some thermostats are also timed, so there's gonna be a notched out area that has to fit in a certain location. This thermostat does not have to be timed, but you do wanna make sure you get it in in the right direction. Once the thermostat is in place, all you have to do is take the O-ring seal and set it on top of the thermostat. You should have to kind of work that O-ring into the housing because it should be a pretty snug fit around the inside diameter of the housing. I double checked the thermostat direction and made sure the seal was in properly, then put the upper part of the housing back in place and started the two bolts. These thermostat housing bolts are pretty small, so you don't want to get crazy with tightening them down. The correct torque spec is 15 to 22 foot pounds. I use my quarter inch ratchet to get them close and then just a little bit more with my 3 8 ratchet to snug them down. These bolts actually thread into the intake manifold and you don't want to over tighten these and possibly strip that out because then you just created a lot more work for yourself. So since that stupid spring clamp busted on me when I was removing it, once I finally got it off the stupid hose, I replaced it with a good old fashioned hose clamp and tightened it down with a 5 16 nut driver. Then all that's left to do is go ahead and top off your overflow bottle with new coolant. Now I actually got gold for this because the gold will mix with the red and the green. If you do not get the universal coolant, make sure you match what is in this engine to start with because the red and the green coolants do not mix. Right here, I'm just squeezing the hose back and forth to work any air out of the system but it is still a good idea to completely top it off, then get it up to temperature, let it cool down, and check it one more time. Using a can of brake clean, I cleaned off the area where I had worked to get rid of any residual coolant that was left over, so when I got back from my test drive, I could verify that I had no leaks. When putting the engine cover back on, make sure you line up the two tabs at the front of the engine, and then just tighten down that rear bolt using that quarter inch ratchet. I cleared the codes using my little pocket scanner, and went on that test drive, made sure I had no leaks, came back, let it cool down, check the coolant one more time, and that's all there is to it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.